Now we're going to look at is a submission option that we have of the butterfly guard and some contingency plans based on his predictable defense. So a lot of times I'm going to be here with Eric and he's going to be sitting up and he's going to be fighting me for the butterfly guard. Okay? I want to do this before we fully engage. I don't want to be in this locked up over under yet. All I'm going to do is he's reaching for me. I'm going to sit back. He's going to reach. I'm going to snap his head down, karate chop his neck. Boom, right here. Now I'm going to slide my chest up to the back of his head. I'm going to lock my hands, choke up, sink hard, getting into my 10 finger guillotine position. Good. From a different angle. So once again, I'm sitting back here. We're playing. He tries to come in. I snap down, shoot over, lock my grip, collapse my weight. This crushes kind of the front of his throat. That's a great submission if you can get it, but more often than not, the person's going to defend. All right, they've got their guard. You don't have the most amount of leverage. So as I snap down and I come here, they're going to commit their hands, yes. As they commit their hands, that's fine. I'm committing my chest to their shoulders. This is going to hold Eric in place for a second. I'm going to release, spin. As I spin, I want him to freeze. I want my chest to his back. Right here. Hooks in, choke on. Once again, the back take and choke occur as one. You always want to condition yourself to reach for this Mataleon as your hooks come in. It creates a pit of the pendulum sort of experience where they don't know which to defend because they don't want to give up either. But we're taking advantage of the fact that so many jujitsu guys are ingrained position before submission. Block the hooks, don't give up the points. They forget about your neck, which leads people like us to have a superior comparative advantage. Now, Sometimes you're going to be with someone who's a little bit hip to what you're doing. And they're going to be thinking, fall to the side, prevent the back take. So once I'm here, I cut them off guard. He blocks. Now as I go to spin, he's able to collapse his body. That's okay. I'm going to shoot to an underhook, hop up, spin over, hit my straight arm bar. So once again, this time sped up a little bit. This one, once again, like all our arm bars, I might have to reiterate, it'll feel sloppy. It won't look picture perfect. That's because you're initiating a scramble, but it's a controlled scramble. It's a scramble where you have a strategy and he's just kind of wandering through the dark. So if it's not as pretty, not as picture perfect as a lot of these arm bars, don't worry. Breaking it down. I'm snapping him down. He immediately blocks. As I start spinning, I feel that he's off center. His shoulder is going down. As soon as I feel that, I underhook, spin, sit and throw. Secure the thumb away from the chest, which really is just making sure that the elbow is against my torso or my hip. If that's in place, then you have got your submission. The first, the back take, rear naked choke. And now, the spin over arm bar. A lot of these transitions are going to seem very fast. And you might think, oh, but I'm slow. I don't have that kind of speed. It's not that I'm faster. It's that I've drilled this, I've repeated it over and over again. We're going to have a bonus DVD here where you're going to see the drilling sequences. Make sure you watch that, make sure you break it down, and once you learn to crawl, then you'll be walking, then you'll be running, then you'll be sprinting, then you'll be catching all of your opponents.